Hi guys, welcome again. Okay, in the previous lecture, we we have completed our board layout for the flasher circuit. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss how how to actually put this circuit on a physical PCB. Now. When we talk about PCB, this is how a copper clad looks like. It is just a square piece of board which has a complete copper layer in on top of it. And when you have finished and when you f finally want to put a socket on top of it, it looks something like this. So this is how your circuit is going to look on a physical PCB or a copper clad after completing the process let's see how to achieve that now it will always be a good practice to give relatively a bigger ground area to your circuit the only reason being that if you have a larger area over which your current can be dissipated your circuit your circuit will work relatively smoother your circuit won't be won't heat up now these issues won't be faced in a relatively small circuit like this and with a timer ic but if you are making a circuit which involves say motor driver ic's you might require to do this so there if you have given a given enough space for your current to be dissipated your ic won't heat up and your circuit is going to be relatively smoother now let's see how to achieve that under your text tool you have an arc and arc tool and under that arc tool you have a polygon tool select the polygon tool and begin tracing along the edges of your board that's basically the wide border when you complete the trace it changes into a dotted line you right click onto the dotted line and use the name tool and give the name select this polygon and give the name as ground say ok again you right click on the polygon go to properties and set the isolate to 0 0.016 and say ok when both these settings are done use the ratchetness tool and observe the changes on your board now let's go back to our schematic for a minute if you observe closely the negative terminal of our polarized capacitor one terminal of capacitor c2 pin number one of i pin number one of ic and one terminal of r2 are all four pins connected to ground let's see if this has happened okay we have if you observe closely this is one pin of R1 whereas this another pin this is another terminal of R2 which has to be connected to ground so this complete blue area is our ground plate now and R2 is connected to ground directly whereas jumper 1 the pin number 2 of jumper 1 where we'll be physically connecting the ground from our supply is also connected to the ground plate Similarly, we have pin number 1 of the IC also connected to the ground plate. Another terminal of capacitor C2 also on ground. And last, last is the negative terminal of polarized capacitor also connected to ground. So this is how you can achieve a ground plate. Now if you try and visualize, all this is going to appear on this particular side of your copper clad and this happens to be the bottom side of your copper clad this is where you will be actually soldering your component leads whereas you'll be placing the components on top of the board from the other side now this particular image is a complete image of our layout before transferring the layout onto our PCB we need to make a few changes let's see how we can achieve that you can go to file go to export we exported the part list for our schematic for our layout we don't really export a part list rather we export different images so click on image change the resolution to 300 dpi area let it be full give some name flasher top and bottom both give the name as top bottom as of now we'll see why so click on browse and make sure you are saving the image in your project folder say save 
and click OK. Okay, now go ahead and check your project folder, and there should be an image which has the same one. So this is the image that we exported. This is the complete top and bottom image of our layout. Let's change these two other layers now. Now if you observe closely there is an info tool here. Right under that you have layer settings. If you click on layer settings a menu like this appears which is to display. Now our board is just a single layer board so we have only bottom tracks and we don't have any tracks on the top layer. So top is not required. Now let's check the difference between the top and bottom layers which will help us when we want to transfer our layout onto a actual PCB now. Okay now let's say I want to transfer this circuit onto a PCB. Under this info tool you have a layer tool. Click on the layer tool and a display settings like this appear. Initially select none then select bottom. You have to click on the number to select that particular function then pads. Go for dimension, T place, B place, T name and B name. Then click apply and then say OK. So this is how your bottom layer is going to look. You have to understand that components are not placed from under the PCB. They have to play they have to be placed from top of the board. This is the bottom layer where these pads will appear. That is the solder pads which look like so the image that we have here is actually going to be like this after the process is done and you will have drill these places drill these holes place the components from under the board now which is from the other side of this board and then you will have to solder it here so as to achieve connection between your track and the component then you go ahead and export this image call it as bottom Again 300 dpi, browse, make sure it's getting saved in the same folder, save, then say ok. Let's go ahead and check our folder if we have another image, yes. You observe this is a flasher bottom with origin, value and everything whereas this, so this is our original board image where we have the value, the origin and everything and the other details of the components. Whereas this is only component placement, that's component dimension, it's just a boundary, just indicating where what has to be placed. Let's now see how the top layer will look. Go ahead, uh, again select your layer settings, select none, then select top, select T place, P place, T origin, B origin, T name, B name and dimension. Say apply and OK. We missed pads. We need pads here. So this is how your top layer is going to look. Now when I take an image of this thing, let's export this image as well and call it as flasher top save. Now just try to imagine that this is our complete layout. This is our bottom where these components won't actually be there. How your bottom layer is actually going to look just like this. You don't really have anything else on this layer. You only have this pad, your tracks that and the copper area that you have created. So copper tracks and component pads that's it these are the component footprints. Only this much is going to be your actual bottom layer but if I give you a image like this you won't really know what is to be placed where. So you go ahead and select T place B place let's see what this thing does. This thing gives you your component impression like where what is placed. Now I know that this particular component is R3, this is R4 but I need an indication that okay R3 has to be placed here and R4 has to be placed here. Whereas LED 1 must be placed here and LED 2 is to be placed here. So we go ahead and select T name and B name, say apply. This gives me a clear indication that this is my bottom. I have to place R4 here, I have to place R3 here, LED 1 here, LED 2 here but not from the bottom layer. You have to place it from the top layer. Now if I compare these images, this is my complete board image. 
Next image, this is just my bottom image and this is how my top will look. So if imagine this black area is my PCB board, I will mount R3, R4 through the holes on this side and on the flip side of this board will this board appear, will this layout appear. So I will then be able to physically solder it. Let's try and make this thing a little more clear. So this is how I have only changed the colors. You can do it from here. You select, say I want to change the representation of dimension. So you click on this color square here, double click, go to color and then you can choose what, whichever color you want. So this is how my image looks on a black background. Let's put it onto a white background now. White. Okay. And this is how my bottom layer looks on white. Let's export this as bottom white. Flash at bottom. Flasher bottom white. Let's change to now top. forgotten dimension apply okay. <clears throat> and we also need pads finally this is how my top layer will look okay let's export this H flasher top white okay. now Let's just visualize this even better. From your layer settings, to view the bottom layer, select only bottom, pads and dimension. Okay, you save this particular image. Then for the top layer, you select dimension, pads, T place, B place, T origin, B origin, T name and B name. That will give you an image like this and your top and the bottom image should only be dimension, bottom layer and pads. So your bottom image will be only bottom pads and dimension okay which is this and your top image should only be top pads dimension T place B place T origin B origin T name B name apply okay and this is how your top image should look save this with a name as top and the bottom with the name as bottom then go ahead open paint then go ahead and open paint on paint then you say open and first select your bottom image and open in paint it should look like this you have a select option just click on the drop down menu and say transparent selection make sure transparent selection is checked now on the paste drop down menu select paste from and choose your flasher top which looks like this and then say open. Now if you observe I have two images one image is gone transparent. I am placing this image on top of this. When doing so you make sure you match your component pads which should be easier. So this is how your image is going to be made. This is how your PCB is going to be made. When transferring onto your PCB board, the bottom will be only this thing, whereas top will be only this thing. Just to make the bottom more readable, we will give the names and the component diagrams as well, which is the initial image which looks like this. So you know what is going to be placed where and what must be soldered. If anything goes wrong, you know where to debug. But if you are sending, if you are getting it manufactured from a professional PCB maker, then this is how he requires it to be. You have to send the top layer separately, send the bottom separately. And then finally, 
they map it onto one and your PCB is made. To visualize this even further you can remove the ground planes and do the same transparent mapping. That's basically just don't use the polygon on your circuit and do the mapping. So that is with the different images that you have to print that you have to initially export and then print when you want to make a PCB. Now care must be taken when you print these images they should be printed with their original scale. You should not change the printer scale when printing these images. It has to be a one to one ratio. You cannot have an IC holder which is 1.5 times of the actual IC holder that would that won't help. So make sure you don't play around with the print scale when printing these images. Now finally when you have to put this onto your PCB board the most easiest method is the hot press method which you can do at home also. To do that now the most easiest method to put this circuit on your physical PCB board is the hot press method. The very first requirement, the very first requirement to put it on the onto a board is to fetch a copper clad from an electronic hardware store. Now this is how a copper clad looks like. It looks like a piece of cardboard only that one side of that board is completely copper. Once you have this board with you, you will then have to take, you will then have to print the bottom layer of this particular circuit onto glossy paper glossy is the magazine paper that we get. The reason for printing these circuits on glossy paper is that when you apply hot pressure from the other side of the paper that means this circuit facing the PCB copper side. So the circuit should be printed onto your copper side. So when you have when you have printed this onto a glossy paper you wrap it around the board in such a way that print is facing the copper side and then you apply hot pressure from the other side of the paper. When you do this onto a glossy paper, the print or the ink on the glossy paper tends to transfer onto your PCB board and then your board looks like this. This is how your board will look. It might not be so clean, it, they might not be transferred in a clean manner. In that case you will have to take a marker and redraw on these tracks make sure that the tracks are thick enough once this is done so this is how you apply pressure onto your PCB board sorry onto your glossy paper which is wrapped onto your PCB board the initial image looks like this this is because there is no ground plane up onto this particular circuit if you have ground then this copper will be uh, this there will be copper left out over here now if you have a so if you have an image like this and you haven't the ground plane you haven't used the polygon then there is extra copper onto your board this has to be removed for that you have to immerse your pcb board which looks like the earlier image we saw which looks like this into ferric chloride solution. Dip it into the solution only until the extra copper is removed. Make sure you don't expose it so long that the tracks are also dis are removed. You want the tracks, you don't want the extra copper. Once the excess copper is removed, it looks like this. You only have your tracks left. It's okay, the marker may be there, marker may not be there. Some of the ink remains. You can take some acetone on a soft cloth or cotton and rub over this ink it gets cleared off and then finally you can go ahead and place your components and go ahead and solder them. So once your ink marks are removed using acetone your final circuit looks like this. So there was extra copper here which is removed using the ferric chloride. There would be ink, ink marks here which can be rubbed off using acetone. And this is your final final circuit. You now have to drill holes onto these drill pads and then finally go ahead and mount your components and then solder them. So this is it with making a PCB on your own. Thank you.